At the beginning of simplepick.c, we included a header file called plib.h. So let's go find it now in the xc32 distribution. For me, I find it in this directory, applications microchip xc32 version 1.3, etc. Your, your path may look a little bit different. In particular, your version number of xc32 may be different. So I can find plib.h there, so let me open it up. And we can see what plib does is primarily includes lots of other things. It includes other header files. And in particular, we can see here it includes a file called ports.h. So let's take a look for that file. And here it is. And again, this header file includes some other header files. It also does some other things, defining some macros and uh, constants. But let's ignore that for now, and let's continue following this include chain. And we can see now that we're including a function called, or I'm sorry, a header file called xc.h. Let's go find that one. And now here's xc.h, and it's looking to see what kind of processor you have. It's checking to see if any of these constants has been defined. And if it's defined, then it includes the header file appropriate for your particular processor. So our processor is 32MX795F512L. So here we find it. So when we compile or build our project, we've defined this, uh, this constant. And so it's going to then include this header file, so let's go open that one. P32MX795F512L.h. Okay, so here's this header file, and this is going to be the bottom of our include chain. If you actually jump to the bottom of this file, you can see here there's almost 41,000 lines in this file, and this gets included when you build your project. So let's go ahead and look for one of the variables that we know is in simple pick, tris a. And here we find it. Now there's some C syntax here that you're not going to understand, and that's fine. Uh, but let's take a look specifically at what this is doing for us. It's defining, it's not defining, sorry, it's declaring a variable called tris a right here. And one thing that, well, so it's an unsigned int because it's a 32-bit integer, no sign. Uh, but one thing to notice is it's an X turn. So this is not allocating space for it. And of course, we don't need to allocate space for tris A because it refers to something in hardware. It doesn't, we don't need to set aside memory for it when we build our program. It already exists in the hardware. Now, it also defines all of these bits. So let's take a look at the struct that it defines. So it's defining essentially what's called a bit field. Uh, so if I, let me go to the bottom, in fact. It's defining this data type here. So this is a type def struct. And at the end is this data type that we've defined called tris a bits. And what tris a bits is, is basically a way for us to access individual bits of the tris a special function register. So we can see up here, this, this syntax means that we have the first bit called tris a0, the second bit is called tris a1, so on down to tris a7. And now this ninth bit here, there is no variable associated with it. That's because this, this bit, this pin, is unimplemented on our, on our PIC32. So port a of the PIC32 has these eight bits, 0 to 7. It's missing this ninth bit. Then it's got two more, then it's missing three more in a row, and then it's got two more. So we don't have 16 uh, contiguous bits with port A. We're missing a few. OK, so now what we've done is we define this type called tris A bits T. And the next thing we see down here is we're defining a variable called tris A bits. Tris A bits here, this assembly function means it's this, or this assembly command means it's the same same memory location as tris a that was defined earlier. But now 
tris a bits is a variable of type tris a bits t. So this one has the bit fields associated with it. So now we can say tris a bits dot tris a 10, for example. And we refer to a sp particular bit uh, in that 32-bit special function register. Now, every special function register, or most special function registers, also have associated with them a clear, a set, and an inv special function register. And those are used to clear specific bits of tris A, or set specific bits to one, or invert specific bits of tris A. And you can learn more about that in the chapter. So let's look at one more thing in this file. We go further down. This is actually assembly code, so we don't really have to uh, worry about it for now. But you can see here there's this uh, definition of tris A. And it actually tells us here in the comments that the met virtual memory address of tris A is BF886000. And that corresponds to what you find in the data sheet. So, what we've done here, by coming to the bottom of this big include chain, we finally see the declarations of the variables, the special function registers that we use in simple PIC. And that's what allows simple PIC to compile successfully without any errors. Now, when it actually gets linked at the end, it gets linked with a processor.o file. And that processor.o file depends on your particular processor type. So for us, the 32MX795F512L, there's an object file called processor.o that contains the actual virtual memory addresses of every one of these special function registers. So now when we finally link our code with this processor.o code, those variables that we used finally get assigned specific locations in virtual memory that correspond to our particular model of the PIC32.